one of my viewers wanted me to ask you about nitrous oxide. Yes. Because I, I was told that around here at night, I'm no longer going out around here, but you know, it's, it's, it's a drug that's being consumed quite a bit. Yes, yes. Um, and I know it gets a lot of called hippie crack and government bans and things mm -hmm. like that. What do you see as a scientist when you look at that drug? Oh, I see more government lies. So I was very, very angry when the Sun decided to change the name to Hippie Crack because you could see what was going to happen. So the Sun, I don't know, five, five years ago, six years ago, decided to set out to get nitrous oxide banned. And they, the lever they used was footballers. They got pictures of footballers, and the most famous one was Raheem Sterling inhaling a bag of nitrous oxides. And then they created hysteria about it. You know, look, this hundred thousand pounds a week footballer is using this gas. But they realized they couldn't say Raheem Sterling is using laughing gas because everyone would just laugh at them. Oh, great, they will, you know. Granny used laughing gas when she had her babies. You know, I mean, I, you know, I took it when I broke my, you know, everyone knows that laughing gas is trivial. So they changed the name. So, you know, and that's, you see that, you know, you, all the time, you know, you, you change the name of something, you, you know, instead of being a protester, you know, a terrorist, oh, we've got to do something about him now. Uh, and uh, so they changed the name to laughing gas and I protested and, 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 and hippie crack, hippie crack. It's nothing like crack and hippies, you know, you know, it's nothing to do with hippies. I mean, it's just, it's, it's just a, an intoxicant that young people use. So the question is, why do young people use it? And why, actually, perhaps more importantly, why do footballers use it? Well, footballers use it because they can go to a party, get a bit high. They can get high for three or four minutes, and then it's worn off. It's not going to affect their performance the next day. If they were to get drunk and get high, it would affect their performance the next day. So this is a completely rational choice of, a, of a, a, a transient intoxicant for people who've got to work the next day. Why are young people using it? They're using it for the same reason. It gets them up, it blows their mind, they have a really interesting experience, but it's fine. They're not gonna be fall over, they're not gonna be risk of assault. You know, you're, you're, in, you're back together so fast. And it's a kind of rational alternative to alcohol if you don't want to hang over and you want a bit of drive home. So, so the banning of nitrous oxide was, a, was just the example of political parties jumping on a bandwagon. It started with the sun and then these puritanical think tanks started to to roll all nitrous oxide into legal highs, into new psychoactive substances, into spice, you know, it started saying yeah, they're all dangerous. In the 2015 election, every party, the three main parties all said, we're gonna do something about new psychoactive substances. And the nitrous oxide got sucked in and there was no proper debate. In the debate in, the, in, in Parliament, there was no sensible discussion about whether nitrous oxide was, was actually harmful at all. The government's own advisory group said it doesn't need to be made illegal, but the, but the fact that the, it, there was a decision to ban legal highs, they banned everything because that, they couldn't be asked to think about which ones they should ban and which ones they shouldn't. So it's outrageous. And, it, and it, it's an example of, you know, why, why actually we've gone backwards politically in, in the last 10 years in terms of drug regulation, because we, we, we still, it's knee jerk, it's not thought, for, thought driven.